Couch. Welcome to today's program. On today's program, we have got Kudam Pawose, who is the CEO and founder of FESO Africa. She is with us again this week, discussing with us and sharing with us how she has been running her businesses. On today's subject matter, we are going to talk about some of the pitfalls that entrepreneurs do come across. Kuda, welcome to the program. Thank you, Shepard. It's good to be here. Hmm. Hello to the viewers. Kuda, today we want to start by talking about FESO Africa and its products. We just want to briefly talk about how have you been managing to make sure that all your clients do get your products during the lockdown? Uh, it, it's been an interesting journey right now, uh, but uh, thank God we have managed to, to turn around uh, and we are doing something about it. You know, Zimbabwe and South Africa being markets that do not have a lot of um, buying online, you find that we have had to resort to that. Um, we are now selling most of our products through online, uh, through our website, through our social media, and our clients getting to know about, you know, getting in touch with us directly. And then we have it to ship these products. So now we are working with shipping companies where clients do buy in and then we ship the products. So this is kind of new to us. We've been doing it on a smaller scale, uh, mainly like uh, the countries that are in the diaspora. That's what they've been doing anyway. You know, people buying from eBay, people buying in the UK, um, Australia, they, those guys have been already doing it. And even here in South Africa, we're doing it, but not as much as we are now doing it. So it has now become kind of primarily our business. Mm. So that's, yeah, we've got glitches here and there, and, but we are planning. That's what entrepreneurship is all about, planning every day. Mm. Kuda, a lot of our viewers have actually benefited when you came onto the platform to share your experience. Now we want to continue talking about that very same experience, except today we want to focus on a lot of entrepreneurs have started their companies, but it has been discovered that they do not grow beyond the fifth year. But not only that, even those that have grown have still remained being small businesses. Well, being a culprit. <laughs> we, we just want to find out from you, why is it like that? Well, you know, first I need to differentiate in terms of understanding of small business. Uh, when you go to uh, growing markets or grown markets, you know, if you go to the States, when they talk about small to medium enterprise, you're look, small businesses, you're looking at 10 million going down. But when you come to Africa and you are in our settings, you know, 10 million is not really a small business by my understanding and the rest of our viewers understanding by African standard. So, but I think most of us, it's because of the things that we do as small businesses that makes us remain, me being a culprit, I've done that. It's hard to break through uh, your threshold of being from small business. Yes, you can go to middle uh, business income, but yeah, it's hard. Because they are habits that we as entrepreneurs do develop as we start our business and forget to lose those. And as a result, we tend to fall back on our face. Mm. Being an example for myself, <laughs> I did the same. I, my business grew um, and I would want to believe that I grew to the level where I, my business was now over 5 million here in South Africa. And then those small business entrepreneur, entrepreneurs mindset kicked in and I fell foot on my foot. So then you had to start again because most of small businesses, we start something. We think we have made it and you make those same mistakes and you back on your feet and on the floor and you kick up yourself again and you know so those are some of the things that if we can watch them we will be able to break through mm. could I, you have talked about uh, other economies 
and picking the USA in particular, comparing them with uh, African countries. But maybe yeah. before we can proceed further, we need to be able to define to our viewers in terms of size. If we are saying this is a small business and this is a big business, what are we looking at? Are we looking at the number of employees? Are we looking at the top line, the revenue or sales being generated? Or we are looking at the bottom line? We're looking at the bottom line. How much is this business making in a month, in a year? That then makes it go to go into a small business uh, segmentation or medium or high business, big business. So how much profit do you have? How much profit are you making in a year? That will define where you will be. Mm. And also the volumes of how much money that you're channeling. Okay. You know? Okay. Mm. okay. Could I, you have told us that you have passed it through this stage of an SME. <laughs> yes, I did. Would you briefly uh, share with our viewers in terms of how and when did this happen? Well, around 2009 here in South Africa, I made the breakthrough in the hair and beauty industry. Um, I opened a two million rand spa and at that time I passed now the area where I'm taking from Shepherd to pay Paul and from Peter to pay the other person so this time now i had gone past the stage where I didn't need to be looking for money I had the money I was making it and suddenly if I wanted to buy anything I had the cash the cash was there. So one of the, the challenges that a lot of us, or the challenges that I went through is that suddenly you've got all this money and you then think you are big. What we then do is we go into uh, levels that we don't understand. So I went into wanting to be associated with the big boys and you then uh, do what the bigger businesses are doing. So that's involved the business management. You know, you, you don't now start, because it's a small business, you start paying attention. You pay attention to every cent that happens. But when the money is there, you don't pay attention to the, you know, to the bottom line, because it's there. So I... I also thought, oh, okay, you know, I don't need to run my business myself. So I got a management company to run the business. And I, but unlike big businesses, they have, com you know, companies that run their, their businesses or they've got management team that runs their business. But they are so shrewd in the sense that they've got an accounting uh, department that is there making sure that the management, the checks and balances, mm -hmm. which I didn't have. So I had a company that was billing me for running my business. They'll tell me, oh, we need this, we need this. So for me, it appeared as if this is what is needed to be in that zone, you know? So I played with money. I had no savings. Um, so every day I'm getting bills, I'm paying, um, yes, I was getting business back, but I was not paying attention to, uh, the bottom line. Mm. And soon enough, the money that was coming in became lesser. And I was now, I had time to myself. I wasn't paying so much attention to my business. And to be honest, that resulted in the management company doing what they thought was good for my business. I'm not saying that they were not doing what was good for the business, but they were doing what they thought was good for the business. And as a result, it was not my vision. And the business folded. Mm. And that's, that was like, yeah, it was hard. You know, you, one day you can see your account has got maybe 10 million today and then suddenly now you're seeing your, your account is going to minus and bills are still coming and you can't, you know, uh, afford to pay them. So that was one of my mistakes. I jumped before. It's easy to obtain something, but it's hard to maintain it. 
So as small uh, enterprises, we jump to do things so that we look big before we actually, even ourselves as the owner has grown to that level. I didn't have, I didn't have the checks and balances to be able to look at uh, the management company on what they were doing. I was just taking their word for it. By the time I, I paid attention, it was because I was now not able to pay the other things that I wanted to pay. And suddenly in my account, there's no money. What had happened, I had no recourse. I wasn't there. I was not paying attention. So that's, that was one of my uh, biggest, biggest failures. And so, and the other thing now is, yes, I had made a name and I could have um, manipulated the situation and gotten into even dug myself deeper, which I would want to, to thank God that I had wise counsel. Remember the people that I was telling you about? Um, they told me to stop digging. Small businesses we keep digging. And you see that this thing is not working. If it's not working, shut it down. And because it's pointless to have um, more money going in. They, they say, why should you use good money to chase bad money? So stop digging. If it's not working out, stop and start all over. But then also then it comes, you know, as small businesses, suddenly you are, your name is all over. You're playing with the bigger people. You don't want your name to be known as you have failed. So you keep up the appearances, small to medium enterprises. That's our biggest challenge. We keep up appearances. Mm. We want to appear big. We want the Jones to think it's still happening when it's not. So be sincere with yourself and stop thinking. When it, that happens, close shop, shut down and start all over again. There's nothing wrong in shutting down and accepting your failure. Remember what I said, whatever is thrown at you, look at it from a positive and you'll be able to actually do something better with it. So that's what happens to me. So I had to close down um, and start all over again. So I remained from almost, I just passed through my threshold, but because I was not paying attention and also it's easy to obtain, you know, things, but hard to maintain. It's just like buying a car. You can buy it today, it's easy, but can you service it? Or going and get a mortgage, do you have the money to be able to sustain that mortgage or you don't have? So that's, those are the things that is small to medium enterprises. When we start seeing the money coming through, we start spending the seed instead of saving. I had no savings to fall back on. So instead, I would see money sitting in a current account, spend it instead of saving it. So there were no savings. So those are some of the things uh, that we need. It's now money management that we need as small businesses. While you are growing, you must also train yourself in knowing. Don't just uh, work on cash flow management. Cash flow management is very important, but also you need to educate yourself in money management. I didn't know money then. And money left me. Money is no soul. It leaves. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't pay attention to it, if you don't look after it, it will leave you. That's simple. And could so I, that's what happens to me. Could I help me to deconstruct this? And I want us to decongest it as we make our viewers understand. Mm. You seem to be saying a lot of things happened, but I would want to find out from you, was it because of lack of proper systems? Was it because you had a management team that you did not listen to? Or it was a combination of both factors? I think it was a combination of everything. Uh, one, I, I did not really go out of my way to understand what the management team was trying to do. Okay. And also at the same time, 
I didn't understand or did not know what it means to have a management team. And also, I had no clue. Yes, I knew everything about money. But I think it kind of got to my head also, which is another thing. So really, how it failed, it really was my fault in the sense that it got into my head. I, I'm, I started obtaining things that I had no knowledge of or on what to do. And I started dropping balls myself because the management team, I can't blame them because had I been there watching what they were doing, working with them, having meetings with them, reading the reports on, they would send reports. So some of the things we just look through and, you know, because the account is heavy. So some of these things we don't pay attention to. So paying attention to detail is very important. So the, it was a combination of everything. I didn't know what I was doing. Suddenly, by fluke, I just, boom, suddenly I'm in money. And did I have the culture? I didn't have the, the correct culture. I didn't have um, uh, the discipline to understand what was going on. It was new, new area, new money, new area. And it got to my head. And I was just human. <laughs> And then entrepreneur. <laughs> Kuda, you always bringing up very interesting areas that we need to look at. A number of people have said there is need for an entrepreneur to separate himself or herself from his or her business and allow those that are working for him or for her enough legroom, enough latitude to do what they want to do. Yet it seems again in this very same conversation, you still need to maintain and get involved to make sure that you do not lose it. Can you try and help us understand to what level can you let go and to what level should one be involved in your business? You know, uh, now when I look back, it's, it's, as an entrepreneur, if you want to grow and get out of the small to medium enterprise, you need to work on your business, not in the business. Because mm -hmm. when you work, work on the business, you now become the strategist. You see where you're going. You, you're working on your vision. But in most cases, we love to work in the business. When, um, when you come to my shop, I want to be seen, to be there. And, um, and yes, in some areas, like take for example, in some areas they're very personal, like uh, I'm in the game. So you find that I needed to find a balance between could I working in the business and could I working on the business. And, so I didn't have that balance. So I needed to, to, to have time to work on the business so that I can uh, you know, steer it in the direction where it is going. And then small business owners, we love to mentor. In, you know, you employ somebody, but we think we know better, you know. But I believe that now, I believe that we need to employ people that are better than us so that they can do, they know what they're doing. But what is key for us is for us to share our vision with them. Let them understand where we want to go, where we want to take the business. And then let them do their work because that's now working in the business. But in most cases, I think one of my challenges was I, want, I, I never worked on the business at that time. I loved working in the business. I loved being there. I want people to know this is mine. You know, that's our biggest downfall. So we never then allow those, the technocrats who knows what they are supposed to do and neither do we take um, their advice seriously. They are just there for sure. Mm, 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 mm. So you need to be able to learn to work on your business or if, like me, you have to work in the business. Take time out to work on the business. 
and also give uh, an opportunity for those that are supposed to be working in the business, the leverage to do what they are supposed to do, because we don't do that. Mm, mm, mm. We want to be everything and everywhere. Mm, mm, mm. Could I, I would probe you further. I think this is a very interesting subject that we're talking about. How mm. much of that failure would you attribute to either comfortability, complacency, or outright lack of training and development when it comes to entrepreneurship? I think outrightly it's lack of training. We don't know because we know we love to sell. We love to start something and I want to make money. But do you take time to train yourself on what is the correct way? Yes, that's your passion. Like for me, you know, hair is my passion. But when did my passion stop and where did the business start? So I should be able to, to understand the business and let the business run and still be able to satisfy my passion because my passion is not the business. Mm -hmm. So until you learn to know how to differentiate the two, you keep on mending, which is what I did and the result, I lost a good business, a good project. Mm -hmm. Could I? So, so small businesses, we keep on going into these cycles. Mm -hmm. You know, you get your high, and for as long as you, because I didn't know money, money management, the money that I had at that time, had I known what to do with that money, mm -hmm. I would not have fallen to the level that I am, mm -hmm. or the, to fall into the level that I went to. You know, because there was money, and I would have saved it, and it would have saved the business. Mm. But there was no money management. Mm. I'm not talking about business management. So it's now you need as an entrepreneur to move to the next level. Mm. You should be able to maintain and know what to do with your money. But that's foreign for Africans anyway. Well, I'm not trying to be. But in small to medium enterprise, especially in Africa, we don't understand the value of money in what money? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very grateful with what we've discussed so far. My last question then needs to focus on uh, the performance graph. A lot of entrepreneurs. Hello? Yeah, you say something? Yeah, I was saying my last question now, I would need us to focus on the actual performance graph. A lot of entrepreneurs do not realize and know it when the graph begins to ebb. At what point did you notice that something was going wrong? <laughs> I only noticed when I couldn't pay bills. <laughs> you know, I mean, because I was not paying attention to the accounts. Remember, I said I wasn't paying attention to the business. Mm. And the mistake a lot of entrepreneurs do, they pay attention to the account. Do you understand? Mm. If we need to stop paying attention to the account and pay attention to what the business is doing. Every month, you must, as a business, okay, not, I mean, for me, we do it every day. Every day, we account for what we have used and for what we have made. Mm -hmm. And when we make a lot of money on that particular day, we want to understand why. Why have we made money? And if we have not, I want to understand why have we not made money? So the one day builds up to one week. One week builds up to one month. After one month, you should be able to look, have, have an, um, you know, an overview of your business. See where it's going, what's lacking, what do you need to do? But these are things that I have to learn because I've yet, I, because I wasn't doing this. I was just to be paying, you know, as long as there's money in my account, the business is doing well. But just having a good um, bank balance does not necessarily mean 
your business is doing. So don't look at how good your business is doing by the credit balance. Look at the performance on day to day. So you must, then that will be able to, you'll be able to see the chart that we're talking about. That you say, okay, fine. I mean, for the next five weeks, we've been making 200 runs and there's no change. Why? So your graph, you should be able to be plotting on daily basis. These are things that I've learned to say, watch your business. But you will never be able to watch your business if you're working in the business. You need to be able to get out of the business and work on the business. Then you'll be able to see and have an overview. Hmm. Kuda, we are very grateful for this. You know, half the time when things are getting more interesting, that's when we run out of time. But we are grateful to FESO Africa for granting us this opportunity to talk to you. We look forward to meeting you and talking to you again next week on another very important subject matter that can only make our viewers continue to benefit from this platform. Thank you. To our viewers, uh, thank you very much for having been with us. May you continue to subscribe to our show. Watch out for our next show. And Kuda is back with us again this coming week where we are going to tackle another very important uh, topic discussing about the common mistakes that a lot of entrepreneurs continue to make. So continue to subscribe and continue to watch out for our future shows. Once again, thanks very much, Kuda. Thank you. Thank you.